everybody, this is Angel with Alternative Health. Most people are not getting enough magnesium. Today, I would like to talk about information on how magnesium deficiency can be attributed to farming techniques, the standard American diet, and medications. I will also discuss the problems with testing magnesium levels. Now, magnesium is a critical mineral in the human body, and it's involved in 80% of known metabolic functions. It is estimated that 60% of adults do not achieve the average daily intake of magnesium, and 45% of Americans are magnesium deficient. That magnesium deficiency can cause things like high blood pressure, diabetes, and neurological disorders. The high rate of magnesium deficiency can be attributed in part to a steady decline in our general magnesium content of fruits and vegetables. Mineral content in our farmed food has declined by 80 to 90 percent in the last 100 years. People were sounding alarms as late as early as the 1930s about our soil not having the right nutrients. In addition, we now use phosphate-based fertilizers that has resulted in a further decline of our magnesium in our soil. This loss of magnesium across healthy foods has been compounded by a historical rise in the consumption of processed food, when processed food has been shown to impede magnesium absorption and contribute to the current state of magnesium deficiency. Now, modern dietary practices are now estimated to consist of about 60% processed foods. Processing techniques such as grain bleaching and vegetable cooking can cause a loss of up to 80% of magnesium in our food. And be careful what you drink as well. Soft drinks, which contain high phosphoric acid, contribute to magnesium deficiency because phosphoric acid neg negatively impacts magnesium availability and absorption. Caffeine and alcohol increase renal excretion of magnesium, causing an increase in the body's demands also. Common medications such as antacids, antibiotics, and diuretics can also have a negative effect on your magnesium absorption. They're also difficult to check. The main reason it is hard to test for magnesium is because only 0.8% of magnesium is actually in our blood. The rest is distributed through our soft tissues, our muscles, and our bone. And magnesium levels can be affected by short-term changes, day-to-day -day and hour-to-hour. -hour. So basically, we have this um, moving target that we're trying to test, and it's hard to test accurately. So until there is a better way to identify magnesium deficiency, there have been some criteria that have been established to help determine who may need to supplement with magnesium. And the criteria is divided into major and minor risk factors. So major risk factors for magnesium deficiency include people with diabetes and heart disease and people who drink soda and eat processed foods. Medications that can cause that are diuretics and antiacids. Leg cramps and constipation are another sign that magnesium may be at a deficiency. Now, some of the minor risk factors for magnesium deficiency are people with osteoporosis, people who drink coffee and alcohol, and people who take antibiotics. Other issues that may cause minor risk factors for magnesium deficiency are sleep disorders, fibromyalgia, and chronic fatigue. If you fit one of these risk factors, you may want to consider supplementing with magnesium. The data I discussed today comes from Nutrients Magazine, which is a peer-reviewed journal. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, and this is not intended to diagnose, treat, or prevent disease. Drop your, drop your questions below if you have any, and thanks for listening.